So before we continue with the video, I want to talk to you guys about where I got this shirt from, and you probably guessed it, jerseyfifa.com. They have kindly sponsored today's video, and also sent me a load of free shirts for me to check out myself, and I can now really vouch for the quality of these products. They have loads of shirts to offer on the website, so if you are interested, head to the link in the description down below, and check out Jersey FIFA for yourself. Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel, where today what we see is Manchester United getting exactly what they needed. And that was a response, of course. The win, 4-1 win against Real Betis in the first leg of the Europa League tie is very important. But I think the more important thing, even than the result, was the mentality of the players, the attitude of the players, and of course the quality of performance. I think Ten Hag made it quite clear very early on what his intention was here. An unchanged starting eleven from the weekend. Now, the reason behind that, I think, is one saying, you know, you guys put yourself in this problem at the weekend, go fix it, go kind of earn that respect back from the fans. But also, I think that Ten Hag believes that this is his best starting eleven. Do I necessarily agree? Potentially not with a couple of players. But this is what Ten Hag feels is his strongest eleven at the moment. And we know that Ten Hag doesn't like to rotate too much. So I predicted a few more changes in the starting eleven. Although I also wasn't surprised to see it kind of play out this way. So with Manchester United with an unchanged starting eleven, what we can see is that they have a lot of quality on the pitch. And no disrespect to Real Betis, it does look like Manchester United are going to have more quality in this game. Real Betis are a very good team, I spoke about it in my preview of the game. They recently held Barcelona for a long time, uh, they drew 0-0 with Real Madrid in their last game. So, Manchester United didn't beat just some terrible team here. This is a good side in Real Betis, they will do well in the league this season, there's a chance they get Champions League football next season. But Manchester United made them look very average. And it started with Manchester United trying to play the ball out from the back. However, what Real Betis done was lined up in a 4-4-2 with Perez and Jao Quinn on the two centre-backs. We see the two midfielders coming a little bit higher and basically putting Manchester United under pressure. Every team at this point knows Manchester United aren't very press resistant. It's not exactly a secret. Manchester United don't have press resistant players, so Real Betis decide to press quite high. However, what we saw from Manchester United was a couple of quality players doing some quality stuff to get out of these problems. One of those players was Lissandra Martinez. I've said it all season long. He is Manchester United's most press resistant player, and I don't think it's particularly close. Luke Shaw would be a close second, to be fair, actually, but Alessandro Martinez is a different level. This guy has the press resistance of a midfielder, and this game, actually, it kind of made him look like that press resistant midfielder that United need, which potentially a discussion for another day. Personally, I love him at centre back. His ability to play out from the back is incredible. We often saw him stepping past Jao Quinn with some brilliant dribbling. There's a situation where he took on three players all within a space of about one and a half yards and beat all of them to carry the ball forward. Really, really good stuff from him. What we also saw from United, though, in these areas was Fred pushing a little bit higher and Bruno Fernandes actually dropping more into the double pivot. And we know that Bruno Fernandes, again, is a more technical, technically secure player, but also a slightly more press resistant player than what someone like Fred is. So the idea from Ten Hag was to stop United losing the ball in these areas. And to an extent, it worked. However, United did have one problem in the first half uh, with playing up from the back. And his name is David De Gea. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because there's a lot of goalkeeper talk coming up on the channel. Um, but, and everyone knows De Gea is flawed with his passing. It's not a secret. Everyone knows that. But, you know, there's a difference between flawed and what we saw in this game. Anything long, he seemed to be picking out Steve McLaren in a dugout. And anything short, he was looking for the better strikers. He got so, so lucky on three occasions in the first half. Bruno Fernandes got back to make a really good block on one of them. Uh, another situation, they wasted it. And I can't remember the other one. But it was, really was not good from David De Gea. And it did kind of hurt Manchester United in their build-up phase. Because when you're minus a player, of course it's going to be more difficult. It's like playing with 10 men in possession. That is what De Gea does to his team at the moment. As a result, we did also see United often going quite long. Up towards these areas. Realising that they couldn't necessarily always play out the press. So sometimes they had to go long. And from here, United done very, very well. And the reason for this is because when the ball gets knocked down from Veghorst or a centre-back. United have three players versus two players on the second ball and the Real Betis midfield is quite technical but it's not the most physical in terms of the amount of ground it's going to cover they're quite strong players but they don't cover a ton of ground in the middle here so with the energy of Bruno Fernandes and Fred and then the reading of Casemiro United were often able to pick up these second balls and then play from there however that wasn't the main pattern of the game I wouldn't say because in general Bruno Fernandes and Alessandro Martinez combined 
had enough quality to play out from the back and get United in sustained possession. So again, when Manchester United were in more sustained possession, Real Betis was still sitting, uh, setting up in their 4-4-2 shape. And what we saw from here, from Manchester United, was the fluidity of the midfield. So Bruno Fernandes was often starting as a right centre mid and dropping really deep in his area. However, there were also situations when he would pop up on the left-hand side. And what we saw a lot of in this game was rotation down the left here with Luke Shaw, Bruno Fernandes, Fred sometimes dropping in. But essentially, kind of the base of the shape was always a back three. Sometimes, like I said, it was Bruno Fernandes in this area with Shaw much higher. And then sort of an off-balance 3-2 with Dallow on the other side a bit higher and a bit wider. Casemiro in the middle. United are making this off-balance 3-2 shape. Like I said, it could be Bruno Fernandes in these areas. Or we could see Bruno push much higher. And it could be Luke Shaw in these areas. What this does for United, as I say all the time, is it allows them to outnumber these two, center uh, these two strikers. sorry, Which then means that Luke Shaw has time to step forward with the ball. There were also times when it could shift across like this and the Sandra Martinez would be in this area. And again, we know he's very good at stepping forward with the ball in these areas, very comfortable with the ball at his feet. What this allows is quite easy ball progression for Manchester United. What it's also going to do is cause hesitancy in the Real Betis team because this right winger feels like he needs to go out and engage the ball. But what that does is he kind of gets caught in no man's, no man's land a little bit because he doesn't want to let Luke Shaw have all the time in the world because he knows that Luke Shaw is a very good footballer. But he also doesn't want him to go super tight because then he's leaving his fullback one versus one with Marcus Rashford. So what it done was it left him in this kind of in-between position, which then stretched this Real Betis team, allowed Manchester United to get the ball into someone like Casemiro. And from here, United looked quite good. It, uh, in terms of the pattern of play, United were getting into a lot of good positions. The problem here, though, for me, was a lack of sharpness on the ball in the first half. At half time, Eric Ten Hag did make a change with Aaron wan coming on for Dallo, and what it's done was drastically increased the the sharpness of the team on the ball, but also the ball carrying ability. But also, it just seemed like the team talk was along the lines of sharpen it up and we'll win this game. Because from a tactical point of view, Manchester United were getting into a lot of good positions. So let's look at why. One of the reasons, like I said, they've progressed the ball quite easily through the first phase now. Pretty easy stuff. They're getting into dangerous areas now where they can try and create overloads and move the ball forward. In terms of overloads, we can see they have a 3 versus 2 in midfield. Now, you know, it sounds quite simple, but a 3 versus 2 is just a complete mismatch. And when you've got quality players like Bruno Fernandes and Casemiro in particular, they just t tear you apart. Casemiro didn't even have a particularly good, good game. I think Fred was a little bit poor on the ball. But still, just the fact that Manchester United had this overload was really deadly to them. United also had the ability to progress the ball out wide as well. wan ball-carrying ability down his side, and then his link-up with Anthony and Bruno Fernandes was really good. We saw some really good combinations in this area, with a ball going into Bruno Fernandes, and then Anthony could make the run, or wan could make the underlapping run. United caused a lot of problems down this side of the pitch. We also saw it to an extent down the other side on the occasions that Shaw stepped forward. Oh no... It felt more like United were pressing, uh, progressing the ball down this side, drawing this player out here, then going inside, and then actually looking to attack down the right-hand side, which was quite interesting. But United were just very, very good in these areas. They've got this 5 versus 4, as we can see here, when Fred and Bruno Fernandes push a little bit higher. So, from a tactical point of view, they outnumber the defence, look really good in this area. We've also got Bruno Fernandes, who I'll come back onto in a minute. But also, I thought the wing play was really good. We know the threat which Marcus Rashford carries. The second he gets the ball, teams are panicking. They don't know what to do. You feel like you've got to double up on him, triple up on him. But that, of course, leaves space for others. But down the other side, I thought Anthony done well. There was a couple of situations where he saw, we saw him knock the ball past his man and then go towards the, the box, the byline. He done really well in those areas. But also, we saw a spell with him on the left wing. And this might be something which I come back to in like a separate video because his play down the left wing was really, really impressive. And suddenly, he looked like an old-school traditional winger which could beat his man, work a yard, and swing crosses into the box. And the crosses that he was putting in from this area, because he's now on his stronger left foot, which means that he can do it from wider, they were lethal. They, of course, should have scored a couple of goals. Really, really good balls into the box from Anthony. We also saw some really good wing play from Facundo Palestri on this side as well, on the right-hand side. When he came on late on, he looked really bright. Every time he's come on this season, he looks very intelligent with his movement. His first touch looks good. He looks quite direct, a little bit like Garnacho in that sense, looking to get towards the box, towards the byline, as we saw for one of the goals. But for me, the big area where Manchester United won this game was in the half spaces. When you play a midfield two, you leave this space, these kind of two boxes, right? We can see here between Carvalho, Felipe, Vinicius, and the left winger here. You leave yourself a box, and it's the same thing on this side of the pitch. You leave yourself a box, a, ch a channel, what we might call, or a half space. Half space is the best word for it. With Casemiro also joining in the attack, and United making that overload in midfield, 
Manchester United could get the ball into these half spaces. And what we saw from here was a Bruno Fernandes masterclass. In total, the team attempted 52 passes from these half spaces, which is very, very impressive. In my preview, I was saying that this is the area where Manchester United can win the game. And ultimately it was. This is where United really controlled the game and really looked dangerous. But Bruno Fernandes in particular looked absolutely world class again. So, you know, there was those question marks at the weekend about his mentality. The first thing we heard at Old Trafford when the players were coming out was chance of Bruno. That kind of showed, I think, a good message from the Old Trafford fans. Getting behind Bruno Fernandes, kind of Manchester United against the world, which is how it should be. You know, you can see the rest of the world criticising Bruno Fernandes, making up stuff about him basically to make him look worse. Manchester United don't care about that. Bruno Fernandes doesn't seem too bothered by it because his performance was incredible. And genuinely, in attacking areas, Manchester United were just very, very good. Ten Hag had the team set up perfectly, using that off-balance kind of 3-2-5 shape, which could also have an extra player get forward as well with wan -Bissaka. Making it to 3-1-6 was really impressive, and Manchester United completely overwhelmed this Real Betis side. Ended up with about 4 XG, I believe it was, which is remarkable, and it's going to sound daft, but to score only 4 goals from 4 XG is actually quite poor. United should have had 6 or 7 in this game, and... To kind of explain that, to put it into a bit of context, a penalty XG-wise is about 0.76, I think it is. So, just because your XG is 1, that doesn't mean you're expected to score 1 goal. I think when you're a top-level side, you have top-level players, which means you can expect a better performance in terms of XG. In my opinion, you should be scoring from chances around 0, worth, around 0 0.5 worth of XG. You can expect to score from that. So, for United to have 4 XG and only score 4 is actually quite poor. Um, so that's an area where they need to improve. Their course needs to improve in front of goal, although it was great to see him finally get his goal. The passion in the celebration was great to see. Uh, he does need to sharpen up, though. He does need to put those balls into the back of the net. I think really good performance for Manchester United. Really, really good. There's not too much to say in this video. We've kind of seen how they've broken Real Betis down. In terms of a few negatives, because there are always negatives, and it's important to kind of, you know... As I always say, it's not as bad as it looks, not as good as it looks. It weren't as bad as it looked at the weekend, because look how United have responded. But also, despite scoring a lot of goals, there were still a few worrying performances. I think David De Gea's distribution in goal was tragic. I think Fred in the first half lacked that technical security on the ball. Casemiro showed that he isn't a press-resistant midfielder, but we know that. So again, it highlights United's need for that player. The fact that you're dropping Bruno Fernandes all the way in. And also, Vekhorst, he does need to get those goals in the back of the net. His work rate, incredible. He's played every single game since he joined the club, which was never the expectation. He's been absolutely brilliant, works really hard, does a lot for the team. He does need to put the ball into the back of the net a little bit more, though. Hopefully, the goal towards the end of the game will do that for him. All in all, though, a really good night for Manchester United. They were the better team. They deserved the win. They should have won by more. What else can you say more than that, really? Manchester United were very good, so that's all I've got to say. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you have enjoyed the video, and as always, I will see you in the next one.